Good morning traders. Welcome to today's market review. This is Fred Razak at CM Trading. Today is May 22nd, 2014 and it's the biggest day of the week. It's Thursday. So let's look at what's going on on today in the economic calendar. Well, first we're starting with a number coming out of Germany. Okay, it's a German manufacturing number. It's a uh, consensus number amongst the uh, manufacturing managers about how they feel about orders. It's, it is a high impact number because it really touches on the front lines of the manufacturing uh, supply and demand. Uh, so it is a major number and seeing that Germany is one of the largest, uh, most profitable countries in the European bloc, uh, it should have a high impact on the Euro. Euro has been a little bit uh, quiet, selling off a little bit yesterday, but nothing really major. Uh, so I would keep a tight look at this number. Uh, later today, we have coming out of the UK uh, at 11.30, their GDP numbers quarterly and yearly. Uh, and then later later today, uh, coming out of the US at uh, 5, 3.30, excuse me, 8.30 Eastern Time, uh, initial jobless claims, it's a weekly number. Uh, it doesn't really move the market that much, okay, generally, but if there is a, 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 a significant change in the uh, job was claimed than it does. Uh, but later today at about uh, uh, 5 o'clock, uh, yeah, 5 o'clock South African time, we have uh, the existing home sales are coming out. That's a 10 o'clock number Eastern time. Uh, so we'll look at these uh, forex pairs. Just uh, want to highlight a couple of things. We talked about the Aussie USD. This is a picture of the Aussie USD. We had touched on this the other day. And we see that it really tanked and then it did this nice bounce and if you remember yesterday I said uh, if you look to buy this this move at about this range okay uh, with the stop loss a little bit below it uh, you might catch a nice bounce and that's exactly what happened uh, I wouldn't have gotten so aggressive at this trade but you see that there was follow through there was this tremendous uh, pull right back uh, we may just grind into a consolidation at this stage uh, before we take it further because we're hitting on previous resistance which is right here and then support so this this area is quite a a gray area um, you know between uh, 0 0.92750 and 0 0.92625 where we're trading right now so if we do break higher from this area we could go up to 9300 okay which would be a potential resistance and then further up 93250 okay so we really have to find some sort of basis there and of course on the downside we have support consolidating us at 92 just above the 9200 okay so again uh, if you miss this move you may be able to catch some sort of a consolidation here as we trade in a range before we anticipate taking it higher but seeing how the US is coming out with major news today maybe it will continue going up so keep it in your radar uh, we spoke about the Euro USD uh, yeah, it's not major move. If you look at an eight-hour chart, you know, look at the bar. Okay, these were major bars right here. We tanked. Uh, this was from when Yellen spoke a couple of weeks ago, uh, and now we're at these levels right here, and we're bouncing off of it. Okay, there are a lot of people who are long uh, the Euro USD, and they've been long since here, uh, anticipating that they would bounce, and it, it failed that bounce. Then, unfortunately, they didn't cover. Okay, they didn't close their position. And they're, you know, a little bit in a squeeze right now. Uh, so, you know, we are bouncing. Okay, we are range trading. There's nothing really, uh, you know, forcing this market to go up higher. Okay, uh, as you can say, you know, we, we stopped trending in this quite a while ago. So we've been trading within this 139.461 range, 139.500 range, and this 136.630. 639, 640 uh, range. So, you know, at these levels, would I buy it? Yeah, I'd look to buy it. I wouldn't get so aggressive in it at this stage uh, because I don't think we're really trending in a, in a major trending market. It's not a pullback. It's trending within the range. Uh, and, you know, some of these, especially with the Euro USD, it could nominally uh, break some of its support very easily. Uh, so if you are looking to uh, get a little bit long, just be careful on the downside, okay, just keep it tight, 
then make sure you put in your stop losses. Uh, looking into the USD Japanese Yen. Okay, so this was a layup yesterday, and I gave this to you guys yesterday. We spoke about this. We talked about this line that it formed, okay, where you could have picked it up. And at the threshold, we said, you know, the news was coming out out of Japan, and simultaneously we were hitting a certain threshold. Uh, and we've seen this time and time again over this past year where the news, the economic calendar, kind of correlates with the technical factors. And we see that here. Uh, so we hit some sort of support. I actually bought into this move right here. I sold it too early. Uh, okay, but there's no shame in taking money home. But, you know, I could have held it a little bit longer for this, for this bounce. Um, so, you know, if we look at a shorter time frame, let's just uh, clear up the graph. Okay. You see that, you know, it literally, you know, it, it, it went. Okay. It, it really bounced nicely. It's not such a good graph. One second. I'm trying to populate that a little bit better. Uh, it did go. Okay. It did, once it capitulated this high bar, it then, you know, took off. It was a little bit challenging. There's no question it was a little bit, bit challenging. Uh, but once you were in, you're in. I, I, I believe I sold somewhere into this area around uh, around right here I sold it. Jiggled me up. Okay, I should have uh, sold half of it, half of it for this upper range. Uh, but at this stage, looking at the USD Japanese yen, we are trading still in this uh, you know, sideways trade. Uh, there's no there's nothing here that's uh, you know, there's nothing here that's really taking us, you know, up or down per se in the Euro USD, in the USD Japanese Yen. Okay, so we're still trading on this range. We're not trending, but you definitely play the range. Okay, uh, moving on to the GP Japanese Yen. The GBP Japanese Yen did really well yesterday. Uh, it's been, like you said before, uh, it's really been, you know, on this tear on the way up. And yesterday, it just came right back up. Every time it's sold off, it comes right back up. So if you look at an eight-hour chart, you see that it really bounced. So artificial, partially artificial support levels because, you know, they've been breached so many times, okay, that it was a decent play to jump into it. And again, as the news was coming out, this was a beautiful move. So between the two, the GBP or the Japanese yen or the USD, the GBP Japanese yen was a better trade because it, as we know, it always been, it's been trading much more volatile than the USD Japanese yen. Uh, moving finally uh, into the gold, gold popped a little bit yesterday. Again, not much going on in the gold. It has been, you know, trading between 1287 and 1306, which is up here, but you see it's been choppy trading. Okay, so uh, hasn't been tra trending, uh, you know, hasn't been trading for quite a while actually. If we look after this debacle and talk about April, we did the bounce, we challenged again on the downside, and then we're making this really tight. Uh, and as you can see, we're actually forming some sort of a wedge uh, formation. Higher lows, lower highs, excuse me, and higher lows, uh, which is usually a sign that this thing is going to pop in one direction or another. It has happened before with the gold. Uh, so, you know, it... it lost some of its appeal because things in the Ukraine kind of you know quieted down and not much going on uh, politically uh, between Russia and the United States. Looking at the Dow Jones, as we mentioned, you know the Dow Jones been on this huge tear okay on the way up this past year and we kind of leveled off at 16,600, 16,650 uh, even 16,700 uh, yeah. just the other week. Um, and, you know, this has been the story. Every time they take it down, they push it right back up. So, you know, we've seen this formation again, and yesterday was an, another example. Uh, one, every time they took it down, look, every time they took it down, they brought it right back up, just equally. Okay, so it's like a fight between the bears and the bulls, you know, every single time. So, so far, the bulls have been winning, because every time we've had a way down, we've gone up. Every time, up, down, up, down. Every time, up, down, up, down, up. Every time, down, up. Every single time. So this is basically telling me that the graph is still very, very, very strong. Uh, there's no, there's no retracements. 
that is really clear that there's some sort of a trend reversal with the Dow Jones, and I believe we're going to go higher. I actually believe we'll hit 17,000 by the end of the summer. That's my prediction. Okay, I could be wrong, but I'll throw it out there. Okay, but you know this 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 is really something that's making higher lows, higher lows, higher lows, and somewhat consolidating. But it's you know it's resilient. It's showing some sort of power, showing some sort of uh, consistency on the upside. So you know I'm looking to for every retracement, looking to get a little bit more aggressive in buying it, anticipating it's going to go further. So again, keep an eye out on the Euro USD today. A lot of news coming out of the England GBP also, um, and the Euro USD and the USD news that's coming out this afternoon. Wishing you guys a great trading day. This is Fred Ray's Equity Trading. Thanks.